One of the great new features in the Mio console version 5 is the new monitor controller. We wanted to give you a really easy way to switch between uh, monitor sources and output paths in a simple, easy to use interface, and that is the monitor controller, which you can go ahead and grab from the window, show monitor control window. Now the actual monitor controller itself is split into two parts here. We have the monitoring source section, we'll be able to switch between your predefined monitoring sources, including the ability to do a quick source override and your output section when you can go ahead and grab any of the output path that you have predefined, control the level from a single volume fader, dim and mute them. Now in order to configure your monitor path, let's go ahead and go into the configure button here. Now this pop-up has two fields, uh, one for your monitor sources and one for your monitor path. Let's go ahead and define a single DAW source for your monitor source. I'm going to go ahead and press the plus button to add a bus. Now the monitor source name is going to be DAW and we're supporting different bus types from mono up to 7.1 channel surround sound but for right now stereo is going to be good for our DAW source. Now once that's added I can go ahead and choose my single signal source. Now the sources can be any of your DAW inputs, your digitals, and analogs. Now what you'll notice that's missing from this list is the ability to add buses. We can do it for the mono controller but we have a very cool way of doing it and I'll show you that in one minute. For right now I'm going to go ahead and add DAW 1 and 2 and here's a cool Mio console trick hold on the option key to add sequential tracks. So if I go ahead and simply press option and hold down for DAW1, it'll add DAW2 for me because it always adds the next available source input. I'm going to go ahead and now define in the lower section here two monitor paths. Let's go ahead and uh, choose um, my speakers, we'll call them monitors. And again we'll do a stereo output for that. And I'll go ahead and choose a digital output going to another set of converters. All right, now for my output for the monitors, I'm going to go ahead and choose monitor left and right. Again, holding the option key. Same thing for the digitals. Holding the option key and choose digital left and right. Great, so now we're all set. Now I go ahead and press OK. And now my monitor sources have been uh, defined as DAW, and my actual uh, output paths are now defined as monitor and digital. Now I had mentioned there's a very cool way to add buses to the uh, monitor sources. If you go to the uh, bottom of any of the buses where we do our actual outputs, you'll notice that the Add to Monitor Controller is an option here. Just simply choose that. And now I have Q1 and the main mix now automatically configured. Now I'm going to go ahead and have uh, iTunes play a little bit so I can get some sound into my DAW. Here we go. Alright, so DAW 1 is now playing. Now if I want to see the actual effect of the monitor controller, it's probably best to go ahead and bring up the Mio console window. So I've now configured my DAW to go out to the monitors. Now if I want to go ahead and select the digital outputs, just simply click on the digital output button and notice in the, in the controller here we go out to digital outputs. So we've just taken care of some extremely complicated routing uh, through the monitor controller with a single click. It's a very, very cool way to, to work here. Now, the monitor control section, I can simply click between the DAW, the QMix, and the main output to select my sources back and forth. Again, it makes this complicated routing very, very simple. Now, we can also do a source override. So, at any point, I want to just grab, uh, let's say, a couple of channels. In this case, I want to grab my digital left and right, uh, sending out to the, to the left and right outputs. I can simply define them in my monitor paths here for my source overrides, and then click the source override checkbox, which goes ahead and overrides my DAW. Actually, it overrides my entire monitor source section and grabs just the defined source overrides. And I can go ahead and select in and out of those points. Now, in the output section here, I've got the single volume knob, which allows me to go ahead and create uh, volume knob changes here. Now, for ULN2 users, you've never actually had a digital volume control, so this is kind of a very cool thing for us. Uh, we've been doing everything in the analog domain. Now, the controls that we have for the monitor output section are we have a dim control, which goes ahead and drops 20 dBs instantly. You can have a full mute, and if you don't want to accidentally hit your uh, monitor knob here, we can go ahead and lock so changes can't happen. Now one cool thing is calibration between sources. If you have an output path, let's say you're working in a control room and you know that your particular amplifier has a nominal listening level of let's say negative 10, I can go ahead and click in the text field here and grab negative 10 as an output level. And by clicking on the knob with a control click or a right click, I can actually calibrate that path so that negative 10 is now my calibrated output level, which will read at zero. And I still have the ability to go 10 dBs over that and then a full negative 96 all the way down, if I grab it all the way down there. 
Now, uh, path calibrations are per uh, monitor output paths. So, if I go over to the digital section here, I can have a different path calibration. So, I want to have this one calibrated at, let's say, negative 15. Do the same thing. Get my negative 15 in the calibration window here, and then go ahead and either control or right click and set the path calibration. So, they're saved independently, independently for each output path. Now, if I want to go ahead and defeat the output path, simply go ahead and control click on the knob and choose Remove Path Calibration. And you can quickly get rid of your path calibrations. Now, it's great to have a nice fully featured monitor controller, but if screen real estate is very important to you, you're going to love the fact that we have a mini monitor controller. And simply press the uh, green button here on the mini monitor control, and we switch between the full size and the mini. Now, on the mini monitor controller here, we can select between our monitoring sources, which are predefined as our DAW, Q1, and main. It's the same sources you saw in the large monitor controller. And you can switch between any of your output paths as well. Now, your volume control level slider now becomes a right to left slider. You can go ahead and do all your calibrations left to right at that point. If you have something uh, defined in the source override, you can simply select that on and off from this button. You can't actually choose different channels. That has to be done from the larger monitor control window. But if something is pre-configured here, once you do go back to the uh, mini monitor controller, you can click source override on and off. You can go ahead and dim, mute, or lock the output. Now one final button we're going to talk about is the always on top. Let's go ahead and bring it back to the large uh, monitor controller and bring back iTunes. Notice that iTunes went ahead and hid the monitor controller. Now there's a lot of time where you're going to want to have an always on top monitor controller if you're working in another application and you want to have uh, access to your monitor controller at all times. Now we do have an always on top button and one touch click when you change applications the monitor controller continues to float on top. It's a very very useful feature. Now the cool thing are the key commands. Let's go ahead and hide iTunes for a second here. Using um, key command, we can actually go ahead and pre-configure um, the switching of the monitor sources and the output sources from key commands. To show the key commands window, the uh, key command actually is Command, Option, and Control Z. And that brings up the complete list of key commands within the Mio console. Now, to switch between monitor sources, you have up to eight different key commands for the monitor sources. And that's Command, Option, Control, 1 through 8. So if I wanted to grab DAW1, it's Command, Option, Control, 1. Q1 will be number 2, and main will be number 3. So up to 8 different sources that you can quickly select back and forth with, with Command, Option, Control, 1 through 8. Now your output sources are Command and Option, and it uses the same numbers, 1 through 8. In this case, we're using 1 and 2 to put back and forth between the monitor and the digital control section. Now, if you have a, a Shuttle Contour Pro or another um, kind of third-party interface control, if you can map those controls to standard key commands, you can go ahead and route them to the key commands defined in the key command list, or simply change the key commands that are associated in the Mio console. So you've got lots of choices. So again, the monitor control is an incredible way to take complicated routing from multiple monitor sources, including the ability to do a quick source override, in a different output path, and do them simply with a single click of the button or using key commands. And for ULN2 users, this is the first time that we've had um, a single uh, digital volume source to control the output of our boxes. So that's the version 5 Metric Halo monitor controller.